very monopolized, and it sucks because it makes it makes it so impossible for incredible athletes to just make a living. You know, the simple things make a living. You know, these guys, the fighters, are the best athletes in the world. MMA fighters are the best athletes in the world, and a lot of them because they don't have places to fight, they can't make a living. Now they training is a full-time job. And how bad does it suck if this is what you do for a profession? And you can't get a goddamn job. It sucks, man. Everybody should be able to make a living at this. The guys Next. that sacrifice and go out there and entertain us should be able to get paid and feed their families. Next question. Uh, Dave, you worked with uh, uh, Stefan Bonner, correct? Right? Yeah, yeah. Now, Stefan had been talking about retirement. Uh, he kind of was going to ready to hang it up. Right. And he got a surprise bout with right. the, you know, the yeah. best fight on the wall. Yeah, and he, was actually in, he was in Tampa training with us when he got the call. So did did you guys work? Did you energize each other? You um, being energized for your first bout and him <laughs> kind of coming back from what what he was about to retire from? Well, I think, <laughs> I don't know about, I, if I energized him, but he, he got the call. He came to practice the next day and beat the living hell out of me. And I think it was just because he put his game face on. And his game face was on, and he came and he was I mean, he Bring was training chair up hard. here with your friend. Bring you know, your it, was, chair it was a different Stefan Bonner. It was kind of scary. And, uh, and I, I got to say one thing, because Stefan Bonner, I think, is going to be a little disappointed because he called me. And the two things he said is keep your hands up and your chin, chin down. Uh, and you giving back is pretty awesome. I'm just yeah. wondering, like, where all this comes from? Like, what, what makes you give back so much? Because I've, I've been watching what you've been doing in the, the Northeast. And, and it just it's really emotional to see somebody do that. I mean... Everybody knows you're really well off, but to just to give off back that purse, that's one more treatment somebody gets, that's one more day in the hospital to get. Right. What makes you do all that? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because um, the guy sitting right next to me is a dear friend of mine. He really made it possibly well, possible for me to do a lot of things that we're doing now. We're doing stuff together. Um, he's uh, he's Mitch Carterway, and he's uh, in remission from leukemia. And, uh, he's the richest man in the world. <laughs> so, I got to use my name and his money to help people, uh, which is a cool thing. But it's just something, cancer in particular is just something that's uh, something personal for me because my ex-wife suffered with cancer for years. Um, and, yeah, she's in remission. She's healthy. Uh, not speaking to me anymore. But <laughs> so after, you know, after we went our separate ways, I, I kind of kept, kept up you know, the fight that I started. And nice. it's, uh, it's very near and dear to both of our hearts, and it's something we're going to continue to do, especially direct, stuff directed towards kids. Yeah, it's great to team up like this, and it's, it's okay to have, but it becomes your responsibility to give back at that point. You know, and uh, that's exactly what we're doing. And, uh, yeah. A lot of people don't do that, so that's great. Next. All right, wait, wait. Uh, I know you owe, uh, you're a co-owner, I believe, of uh, Caesar Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Gym. Gracie Fighter right Temple, yeah. Yeah, uh, do, you, do you advocate a lot for kids down there a lot? Do you have a children's program? Yeah, we're actually moving our facility so we can actually uh, accommodate children. Because we were in, when I originally opened the gym, it was going to be my personal gym. And it's mm -hmm. in a, a bone shell of a warehouse. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any amenities for children, mm -hmm. which is something that kind of sucks. And we wanted to, to make a change. So we're moving into a better facility because we really believe in, in teaching young kids martial arts because it just sets the tone for the rest of their life. Absolutely. Thank you. Right hey, here. how you doing? Jason with BJPenn.com. Uh, you know, you went through a little adversity in the beginning of this fight. I just wanted to know, you know, how that felt for you and, you know, what it's like uh, stepping into the cage and finally competing. Um, you know, it's weird because at the same time it, it woke me up, but at the same time it woke me up and kind of almost put me to sleep. <laughs> so it really took me a while to get my bearings about me, but after it hit me, I just wasn't, he hit me and he really rocked me. Um, I wasn't nervous anymore, but I was just out of it. You know, it took me a while to get my bearings back, and he hit me, hit me, kept hitting me. And I've said before that if nothing else, professional wrestlers are durable. So I think I've proven that point. <laughs> he did. He rocked, he rocked me. He hit like a mule. You know, you're 43. Uh, you've been training, uh, training in mixed martial arts for quite some time. You know, you've been all over the place with all kinds of camps. I just want to know, you know, what are you looking to accomplish in the sport? Okay. Yeah, I just do it because I love it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I don't have any ulterior motive. I'm not going to get rich out of the sport, obviously. Uh, maybe it's even more obvious after tonight that I'm not going to be a world champion. <laughs> but I do it because I love it, and I want to, you know, I want to promote it as much as I can. Uh, he was talking about how, how good your single was when you took him down. Is that something you feel like is a strength of yours? Did you see an opening? Did no, you grab it? I mean, honestly, we thought that my stand-up was going to be my strength here, and I went to my wrestling because, you know, I was kind of desperate at that point. But my stand-up uh, striking is, you know, I moved pretty good for heavyweight. I just, like I said tonight, I was just, I think, so nervous. And I just, like, it all went out the way. I didn't have my legs under me at all. I mean, I just felt like I couldn't move. And, you know, it was just... Did the nerves stay with you through the fight? Until no, the after, end, after, until after he rocked me, job? after he rocked me for the first time, they were gone. 
but that so was half of my brain. You know, I just felt like I was. It took me a while to recover. You know, so. I've heard I've, I've read a lot about things that you've said, uh, talking about being in your first fight, and you want to do it just to do it. You've always loved to fight, trained a long time. When you finally got hit, when you finally got rocked, was that what you were looking for at the end of the day? Is that something, one of the most things you're going to take away from this fight? Um, no, I think, the, like I said, you know, the biggest thing I'm going to take away from this fight is that my, my camp, uh, members are proud of me. You know, that's what's most important to me, because I know I, I went through hell for eight weeks. And I did it for no other reason than I love it. And I wanted to experience what they they experience. Next so question. Congratulations, Dave. Uh, Matt Jewell from Bleach Report. Uh, my question is for Vince. Uh, take us through the fight from your perspective. Like, how did you feel when you you know landed that first blow? What was going through your mind? And uh, what was going through your mind, of course, when everything went you know yeah, south? Uh, when you take the fight on a few days' notice and you have as many as me, uh, it's about having fun. You know, I don't know if you noticed, I was waving at the kids. I, I have fun in there. You know. Uh, it's too late to get nervous, it's too late to worry. Uh, I honestly thought, you know, it's his first fight. With all my experience, I thought it would be enough to carry me through. Um, but, uh, like I said, that was a beautiful shot. Um, I'm a little wrestler, and I never saw it. I was like, what the hell? You know? <laughs> like, and, uh, you know, heavyweights, there's very few that are great on the ground. Uh, whoever gets on top usually wins. So, uh, there's a big, strong guy. He gets on top, and you can't move. So, uh, but I got to tell you, man, it was, I've had the time of my life here. I fought some of the best, and, and uh it was, it was unbelievable. And when these guys said, like I said, I lost uh, both grandparents to cancer, so, you know, wearing pink today. Um, it's awesome, guys. Awesome, awesome what you guys are doing, man. You know, like, he, he, he has everything. He, he could have about any woman, all the money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he has a life this guy's dream of, you know? This guy's dream about having his publicity, his money, his fame, and he has the balls to get in there and fight. You know, not for money, not because he has to. Uh, you, that's that's respect. That's that's honor. You know, uh, you gotta respect the guy for that. Any guy that would take a chance, and you know, I had nothing to lose. You know, he had everything to lose. You know, his name going out there, he had a ton to lose, and he took that chance. So how can you not respect that? How can you not like that in a guy? You know, it's frustrating hearing all this crap from the you know people that never fought trying to talk shit. And I'm like, you know, hey, the guy's getting in there when he doesn't have to. How many other? You know, well off famous guys are doing that. Nah, they're like, fuck that, I'll watch it from my couch. You know, <laughs> I ain't getting hit. And he went in there, and I, honestly, I thought I had him, and, and he came back. You know, he came, you gotta respect the guy. Guy's got heart. He's gonna question his chin, he's gonna question his heart. And I think that's answered, you know, because he. When, when we were in the clinch, I actually him. told Vince that he gets really hard. <laughs> <laughs> just one more. Yeah, just one more, one question for Dave. Um, you know, you're a professional, you know, mixed martial artist now. You're, you're a famous guy, you know, you've been in movies, you're, uh, you know, pro wrestler. What keeps you grounded, you know, through all the fame? Because you've, for a professional, you know, think, entertainer, you have, like, no you know, ego. Really, because I was such a late bloomer, so, you know, I didn't get into, I made my pro wrestling debut when I was 33. So I was already kind of who I was. I had already developed my character, and you got people, you know, they sometimes, sometimes forget that, you know, most of my life I was dirt poor. I never I didn't have time to my name. So that's what keeps me down to my roots, you know, my mom. One thing I want to know, what ignited the passion for you to choose one of the toughest... I know, you know, so man, what's wrong with I, me, too? <laughs> you could have gave back in so many other ways. I think, you know, why choose this? Well, because I'm a fan. You know, that's why I became a wrestler. I'm a, I'm a fan. Yeah, that's, that's it. You know, I always want to be a fan, you know, on the inside looking out rather than a fan on the outside. I mean, it's so easy to talk, talk crap or say, you should do this, you should do this, you know, do that when you're on the outside looking in. But you never really know what they go through until you've been, there, until you've been in there getting punched in the face. You know, to where you can really stand up. No saying Mike Tyson would say, everybody has to fight until they get punched in the face. Right, everybody has a tough guy until they get punched in the face, right? Okay. Jimmy. Yeah, Christian started with uh, MMAJunkie.com. Um, you will have a movie coming out, of course. And I assume that has a lot of uh, media responsibilities, sure. traveling, appearances, and whatever. Did that in any way conflict with your training? Did you have a hard time seeing focus? Just you know, but, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's something that just is what it is. You know, it's just something I brought on myself, so I can't complain about it. And is CES MMA already talking to uh, about bringing you back? I hope so. You know, I, you know, uh, I consider Drew Birchfield, junior and senior, very close friends. And, uh, He's definitely coming back. You know, That's his wish, positively. He got the butterflies out tonight. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> well, you know, thanks for, for, for coming out. Uh, I'm so proud to be part of this event. Um, um, Dave, Dave Batista gave me the 
the uh, opportunity. Uh, uh, which means I begged for him to be on this card. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan. We became close friends when I was in Montreal, so I really, really begged for you to be with you. So, I'm just proud to be what he did after the fight, you know, gave his first to charity. I mean, to me, it's just respect, you know, and, and he just loves the sport so much. He doesn't do it for the money, you know, he loves the skin. Show nothing but respect to Dave Batista, you know. Uh, Have you all said hello to, hello to, to Mama Batista right here? Come here, come right up here. <laughs> Say hello to Mama. <laughs> mama, how does it feel not such an honorable son? I mean, you do an awesome job. I'm so proud of him. I'm glad raising him in the project something good came out. Good There's good people in good places like that. Oh, yeah. He's a great there guy. Had, there had to be a good ending to this, but I knew he could do it when he went in. Mama, that guy punched me in the face. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Oh, thank you. You did a good job, too.